Sometimes the path in front of us is far from obvious, that we cannot see too far down the way to know which direction to go. I'll never forget working as a camp counselor one summer in college, and the week before all the campers arrived, all the counselors had to be there because we had this long list of tasks we had to do to get the camp ready. We had to find all the ping pong paddles, and we had to air out the life jackets and put out all the chairs in the mess hall, that we had to hike every path and trail all around the campgrounds that we would use that summer with all the campers. And I was clearly the rookie. I had no idea what I was doing. I had never worked at the camp before. I had never been a camper at that camp before. So I followed everybody else's lead. Because as we were making our way, clearing out the trails because they were overgrown from sitting idle since the past summer. We would get to points in the trail where I could not tell or even guess whether they went to the left or to the right because they were so overgrown that many times the way forward is far from obvious. Lynn Hinton is a pastor in North Carolina. She lives in a small house with acres of woods behind it. And for eight months, she decided to spend her time forging and clearing out a path through the woods where she could walk in the evening. And it turned out to be much more work than she ever anticipated, but more valuable as well. That for one, she couldn't decide even where the trail or path was to start. That it wasn't as easy as sitting down beforehand and outlining the trail on a piece of paper. That she had to move with the landscape. She had to take into account its hills and texture that she had to negotiate unforeseen obstacles along the way, and then she had to make the decision whether the trail would go to the left or to the right. And there are so many similarities with our lives and forging a path through the woods. Necessary choices and struggles, the experience of enjoyment and exhaustion that to begin with, she walked up and down the edge of the woods, just trying to decide where the path was going to begin, that facing new circumstances, change or a new beginning, can feel almost paralyzing, that we are frozen as to decide what is the next step to take unsure about our footing or the ground beneath us. And Samuel found himself standing at the edge of something new, something different, unsure about what he was supposed to do, because in the past he had already felt torn about naming a new king for Israel, because the people of God had come to him wanting a king to be like every other nation. And Samuel tried to deter them. He tried to keep saying, God is our king. But the people never relented. So finally, God relented. And Samuel anointed Saul as the first king. But it did not go as planned. So Samuel finds himself now in new circumstances, still feeling the regret of his past decisions and feeling as if he is at fault and now trying to decide what to do as he goes to see Jesse and his sons. 
And sometimes, just as Samuel experienced, not knowing what the next step is, we have to envision the path with our feet. That we cannot, we are unable to outline it beforehand. That we begin just by beginning. And Samuel's there standing in front of David and his sons, except the one that was not there. And Samuel had to first look beyond initial appearances and trust something more until he finally laid his eyes on David and anointed him as the next king of Israel. Hinton recalls being in the woods during those eight months, and as she was forging this path, raking back the leaves, clearing out the vines, she reached an impasse. There was a young pine tree right there in her way where she had decided to go, and now she had to make a decision. She could dig up that tree, uproot it, and plant it somewhere else. But since she knew that in life we cannot always move what is in front of us, instead, she decided to collect some rocks from throughout the woods and put them around the tree and make it a part of the path, that it would shape the journey going forward. That along the way, we always face change. We always discover opportunity. We are always faced with challenges. And we cannot always move that which is in front of us. That instead, it ends up shaping the journey along the way. It is like the path of the psalmist who says... God leads us in right paths for God's name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and their staff, they comfort me. The view from the mountaintop is always beneficial. We can stand there high above the trees, sometimes above the clouds, and look out for miles ahead and know exactly which direction we are to go. But unfortunately, we cannot stay high on the mountaintop. The journey eventually requires us to come back down the mountain, descending again into the valley where we might feel that we are turned around yet again, asking our traveling companions, didn't we just pass that tree for the third time? That we begin to question, are we still headed in the right direction? That we grapple with those kinds of uncertainties, and it is then that we search out God's guidance. In those moments, we might look back and imagine God there in the first seconds and days of creation, where God was forging out a new path for the world, raking back the leaves, pushing back the vines, separating day and night, land and sea, heavens and earth. That there's always risk on the journey. As the Apostle Paul reminds us, we walk by faith, not by sight. That God took a risk, forging out a path for life and grace. A grace which is still with us even now. That it was a new beginning as is Easter, the path that Lent carries us to, that reminds us that God 
stands in solidarity with us with a love that will not let us go. And on our path, as we take steps in faith, we stand in solidarity with God in the same way that God stands with us. The Gospel of John puts for us a sign next to that path that says, walk slowly. It was because Jesus was walking slowly that he noticed amidst the crowd the man sitting on the side of the road who had been blind since birth. And when the disciples noticed him, They asked Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents, assuming that sin was the reason for the situation? But Jesus said clearly, neither of them. That the path of life as it unfolds in front of us entails joy and struggle for us all. That this was a new beginning for this man. He went to the pool of Siloam. He washed and regained his sight. But as he continued down this path, he was criticized. Neighbors that knew him since he was a boy and some Pharisees started to question and criticize him, wondering about this man, Jesus. But all the man could say was, I was blind, but now I see that we are called to walk slowly because if we start running, we may fail to notice or see the way forward. We cannot always make the path in front of us straight, which is difficult because there are days when all we want to do is run ahead. And I have thought about running ahead just about every day this week, wanting to know when Is the end in sight? Or who all is this affecting and in what ways that I cannot see now so that we can do some things in this moment that will prevent some of that suffering in later moments? Or as the anxiety or just basic stress of it all pushes us to run ahead. Hinton says that there were days when she was clearing out and forging that path through the woods that she ended the day in utter frustration, that she had perhaps cleared out a full day to do nothing but work on this path that ended up taking her eight months. She had a plan in mind. She had goals that she wanted to accomplish. But by the end of the day, she looked back over her shoulder, and all she had moved was about three feet. She ended the day in utter frustration, feeling as if she was going nowhere. That all she could see was the work not done. All she could see were the obstacles at hand. But she writes to us and says, try not to dwell on that which is discouraging or overwhelming. Try not to focus on the obstacles, focus on the path. Try not to watch for progress, but rather pay attention to the process. Try not to become engrossed in what lies ahead, but instead 
as best as we can, remain in the moment, in this day. Perhaps, if we walk slowly and listen carefully, guarding ourselves against measuring these days in feet or yards, we might be better able to discover God's presence right now. That we forge the path ahead by the grace of God that forged a way for all of us at creation a grace that goes before us, that comes after us, that always stays with us, shaping the journey along the way. Amen.